Welcome to this episode of Real Chemistry. Today we're going to be doing this calculating activation energy. So in a previous video I introduced you to the Arrhenius equation. You might want to check out that one first before continuing here. But the problem we're going to solve here is basically you've been given the rate constant at two temperatures and asked to solve for the activation energy. And that's what this says here. It says the variation of the rate constant with temperature for the decomposition of hydrogen iodide to hydrogen and iodide gas is given here. What's the activation energy for the reaction? And this is a really common problem where we'll apply the Arrhenius equation to solve for activation energy. And you're always going to need at least two values for both temperature and rate constant to be able to do this. And it turns out that you can go ahead and take the Arrhenius equation and you combine two of them to get this equation down here in the bottom right. You'll notice there's two k's and two t's and that's because you've combined two Arrhenius equations. I won't go through the algebra to do that here. Uh, but we will use this equation, and we're just going to do two simple steps to solve for the activation energy. First, we're going to rearrange our equation down here for the activation energy, and then we're just going to plug in T1 and 2 and K1 and 2, and we'll solve for the activation energy. All right, let's go ahead and do that. All right, so here we have our equation, and we have our sets of values, and the first thing we're going to do, like I said, is just rearrange for our activation energy. The way we rearrange for our activation energy is first by multiplying both sides by R. That's going to get rid of our R there. And what we're going to get is R ln K1 over K2 is equal to our activation energy times this difference between our temperatures. And now what we're going to do is we're going to actually divide both sides by this whole big thing. A lot of people get stuck at this point in the algebra because they're like, how do I get rid of those T2s and T1s? Just treat that whole big thing like one variable. We're going to take 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1 and just divide both sides by it. And that's totally legal in the easiest way to rearrange this. So that cancels out those guys. And what that means is we'll get that our activation energy is equal to R ln K1 over K2 divided by 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1. Now, because this does look a little ugly, you got a fraction in the denominator, what that's going to mean is when we go to plug in actual numbers, we're going to want to resolve it one step at a time, and I'll show you what I mean there. Let's plug in numbers now. So R is our gas constant, and we always use with this equation the one with that is in joules per mole Kelvin, which is 8.3145. Let's get a nicer 3. And so that's for gas constant, times the natural log. And then the main thing we need to keep track of here is if whatever we plug in for K, we need to plug in the matching T. So... We're going to call the top row up here 1. And that means that this is our temperature 1, and that this is our K1. And the second row 2, which means that's our temperature 2, and that's our K2. Basically what's happened here, right, is they've just run the reaction twice at two different temperatures and recorded the rate constant. So we have two separate times running the reactions at two separate temperatures, and that gives us a combination of a temperature and a rate constant. So we'll put K1, which is 3.52 times 10 to the minus 7, and we'll divide that by 1.22 times 10 to the minus 6. All over that temperature difference, which is 1 over T2, remember our T2 is 575, minus 1 over our T1, which is 555. So, this is where I said we got to be careful, because it's easy to screw up this math when we plug it into our calculator. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and resolve the denominator first. Resolve this guy on the bottom first. And that will make our numbers look a little nicer. So we're still going to have 8.3145 up top, times the natural log of 3.52 times 10 to the minus 7, over 1.22 times 10 to the minus 6. And when I plug this uh, ugly difference into a calculator, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in 1 divided by 575 minus, in parentheses, 1 divided by 585. And that's going to give me that difference. And if you do that correctly, so give that a try in your calculator, you should get 6.26 times 10 to the minus 5. There's more digits, but I'm not going to write those down. You should keep them in your calculator and use them in your next step, but I'm not going to write all of them down. And then what you'll do is you'll plug in the top, 8.3145, times the natural log of that 2Ks there, 
and divide that by our negative 6.626 times 10 to the minus 5. When you do that, rounded to three sig figs, you'll get 165,000 joules per mole. And that's the units that you should get out for our activation energy, and that's because of the units that we had in our gas constant right there. Now, you could convert that into kilojoules per mole, right, which would just be divided by 1,000. It would be 165 kilojoules per mole. But that's our activation energy. So whenever you're given two temperatures and two rate constants, you can go through this process to solve for the activation energy of the reaction, which is basically how hard it is to run that reaction, what hill we have to get over to run the reaction. Thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry. If you have any questions, leave them below.